Now, when you pick a paw paw or a prickly pear, Ow! and you prick a raw paw, well, next time, beware. Don't pick the prickly pear by the paw. When you pick a pear, try to use the claw. But you don't need to use the claw when you pick a pair of the big paw paw. Have I given you a clue? Golly, thanks, Blue. Oh, boy. Uh, now you've gone and given him COVID-19. Come on, Baggy, get with the big. The bare necessities of life will come to you. They'll come to me. They'll come to you. Huh. Prickly pear. Huh? Now this video may well give a little indication of why I decided to not take part in this research by Gates Funded Imperial College London and Ipsos Mori, aka They Die. 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 Okay, so this is a report on AfricanNews.com. Tanzania. Goat, pawpaw, jackfruit, test positive for coronavirus. By Jerry Faseo Bambi. Last updated either June the 5th or the 6th of May, there has been a top and controversial sacking in Tanzania. Head of the country's National Health Laboratory in charge of coronavirus testing was suspended a day after President John Magafuli questioned the accuracy of the tests. On Sunday, President Magafuli who has consistently downplayed the effects of the virus, shocked the world when he said animals, fruits and vehicle oil had been secretly tested at the laboratory. Now take a read at some of the specific things he said had been tested. A papaya, a quail and a goat. All of them, he says, had been found to be positive to COVID-19. Magafuli cast doubt on the credibility of laboratory equipment and technicians and questioned official data on the planned demic. He called for an investigation into what he suspected to be a dirty game in the laboratory. Where the kits had been imported from, though, he would not say. So the lab director here, Niambura Moremi, has been fired, and a ten-person committee has been formed to investigate the laboratory's operations, including its process of collecting and testing samples. Presently, that is, as of the 5th of May, Tanzania has about 480 COVID-19 cases, including 16 deaths. 16 deaths, and they shut the world down. Now, there is so much to talk about in this story, and generally on Tanzania's approach to coronavirus. This morning, we'll take a quick look at the suspension of the lab director. With Jerry Bambi is Fatma Karoum, a human rights activist from Dar es Salaam. Good. Secondly, let's have a look at The Guardian. Life. Everything you need to live well. Well, I beg to differ. Odd news. Well, the odd news about this is the headline should really be breaking news. Goat and pawpaw test positive for coronavirus in Tanzania. This is a report by Michael Bamidel, the 5th of May 2020. President John Magafuli of Tanzania. There he goes. Calling out the gates and the who. Tanzania's president, John Magafuli, has dismissed the coronavirus test kits after they had returned positive results on samples taken from a goat and a pawpaw. During an event in Chato in the northwest of Tanzania, Magafuli said the kits had technical errors. The president said he had instructed Tanzanian security forces to check the quality of the kits. They had randomly obtained several non-human samples, including from a pawpaw, <laughs> a goat and a sheep 
but had assigned them human names and ages. These samples were then submitted to Tanzania's laboratory to test for the coronavirus, with the lab technicians left deliberately unaware of their origins. Samples from the pawpaw and the goat tested positive for COVID-19, the president said, adding this meant it was likely that some people were being tested positive when in fact they were not infected by the coronavirus. This is something happening. I said before we should not accept that every aid is meant to be good for this nation. Magafuli said adding the kit should be investigated. Tanzania has recorded 480 cases of COVID-19 and 17 deaths. This is in May as well, five months after the outbreak, worldwide outbreak. Magafuli's government has already drawn criticism for being secretive about the coronavirus outbreak and has previously asked Tanzanians to pray the coronavirus away. Well, it seems to have worked, really. Magafuli also announced that he had placed an order for a herbal treatment for the coronavirus touted by the president of Madagascar. I have already written to Madagascar's president and we will soon dispatch a plane to fetch the medicine so that Tanzania can also benefit from it, he said. The herbal remedy, remedy called COVID Organics and prepared by the Malagasy Institute for Applied Research is made out of Artemisia, a plant cultivated in the Indian Ocean island of Madagascar. Okay, so here's a report on Reuters.com from May the 3rd, 2020, three months ago. President queries Tanzania coronavirus kits after goat test. Dar es Salaam, Reuters. Coronavirus test kits used in Tanzania were dismissed as faulty by President John Magafuli on Sunday because he said they had returned positive results on samples taken from a goat and a pawpaw. Now this is what a pawpaw looks like. Um, unfortunately it's a bad picture so I'll show you here what a pawpaw looks like. That's it there. This article, game from The Guardian, Can Pawpaw Seed Cure Cancer? Well, let's have a little look at this then while we're here. A community health expert, Mrs. Karunui Israel, says pawpaw seeds can help in the management of diabetes, stop cancer growth, kill bacteria and heal viral infections. Israel, the president of CARIS, a non-governmental organisation, which teaches people on many wonders of plants and fruits, spoke with the news agency of Nigeria on Wednesday in Lagos. The expert advised people not to discard pawpaw, also known as papaya seeds, because of its many health benefits. Pawpaw is a good source of vitamin B and C, and one of its numerous health benefits is that it helps in the management of diabetes. But its seeds are also important to human health. Papaya seeds contain vital nutrients that help to heal cirrhosis of the liver, kill bacteria, heal viral infections, stop growth of cancer cells, inflammatory disease and kidney problems, Israel said. She explained how the seeds could be used in the management of diseases. Take five or six dried papaya seeds, grind them or crush them and take them with food or juice. Do this every day for 30 days, you will have amazing results. Eating a small amount of fresh pawpaw seeds can also help to kill bacteria such as E. coli, staph, salmonella and also work well for food poisoning cases. It is also a good antiviral agent helping to heal viral infection and can also help to detox the liver, Israel said. According to her, pawpaw seeds contain isotheocyanate which works well for the colon, breast, lung, leukemia and prostate cancer. It also contains an alkaloid, carpane, that kills intestinal worms and amoeba parasites. Pawpaw seeds are anti-inflammatory, making them great for arthritis, joint diseases, swelling, pains and redness, Israel said. She said that the pawpaw seeds could also be used to make tea and substitute for pepper in food because of its peppery nature. As a precaution, pregnant women should not use papaya seeds. This is because it can extend to breastfeeding and may be too powerful to young children's gastrointestinal tract. 
Additionally, the seed is not too good for men who are trying to impregnate their wives as it can reduce male fertility, Israel said. She advised people to always go for medical check to avoid emergency. Okay, so that's what a pawpaw looks like. Back to this article. President queries from Reuters. President queries Tanzania coronavirus kits after goat test. Coronavirus test kits used in Tanzania were dismissed as faulty by President John Magafuli on Sunday because he said they had returned positive results on samples taken from a goat and a pawpaw. Magafuli, whose government has already drawn criticism for being secretive about the coronavirus outbreak and has previously asked Tanzanians to pray the coronavirus away, said the kits had technical errors. The COVID-19 testing kits had been imported from abroad, Magafuli said, during an event in Chato in the northwest of Tanzania, although he did not give further details. The president said he had instructed Tanzanian security forces to check the quality of the kits. They had randomly obtained several non-human samples, including from a pawpaw, a goat and a sheep, but had assigned them human names and ages. These samples were then submitted to Tanzania's laboratory to test for the coronavirus, with the lab technicians left deliberately unaware of their origins. Samples from the pawpaw and the goat tested positive for COVID-19. The president said, adding, this meant it was likely that some people were being tested positive when in fact they were not infected by the coronavirus. There is something happening. I said before we should not accept that every aid is meant to be good for this nation. Yeah, true. Magafuli said adding the kit should be investigated. As of Sunday, Tanzania has recorded 480 cases of COVID-19 and 17 deaths. But unlike most other African countries, Dar es Salaam sometimes goes for days without offering updates, with the last bulletin on cases on Wednesday. So I don't think a few days is going to make a huge amount of difference, personally. But that's just me. Magafuli also said that he was sending a plane to collect a cure being promoted by Madagascar as president. The herbal mix has not yet undergone internationally recognised scientific testing. That's hardly surprising. I'm communicating with Madagascar, he said during the speech, adding, They have got a medicine. We will send a flight there and the medicine will be bought in the country so that Tanzanians too can benefit. COVID-19 infections and fatalities reported across Africa have been relatively low compared with the United States, parts of Asia and Europe. But Africa also has extremely low levels of testing with rates of only around 500 per million people. And on a lighter note, here's the Daily Mirror, a report from 27th of July 2020. Pet cat infected with coronavirus for first time in the UK. The virus that caused COVID-19 was detected for the first time in an animal in the UK last week. The pet and its owners have since made a full recovery. <laughs> it's a joke. A pet cat has been infected with coronavirus in the first known case of its kind in the UK. The COVID-19 virus was detected in the animal last Wednesday following tests by the Animal and Plant Health Agency, APHA, in Weybridge, Surrey. The cat and its owners, who live in England but are being kept anonymous, have made a full recovery. So, it's not, as deadly, it's not as deadly as they're making out then. It is the first confirmed case of an animal infection with the coronavirus strain in the UK, after a small number of others in Europe, North America and Asia. The government said there was no evidence to suggest the animal transmitted the disease to its owners. Instead, a government spokesman said, all available evidence suggests that the cat contracted the coronavirus from its owners who had previously tested positive for COVID-19. So there's your anonymous cat and the anonymous owner. Just keep a look out for the socks. The cat and its owner, who live in England but are being kept anonymous, have made a full recovery. The cat and its owners have since made a full recovery and there was no transmission to other animals or people in the household. So basically, I imagine there are other people 
in the house and other animals in the house that didn't can contract it. So this social distancing obviously is a load of rubbish. A private vet initially diagnosed a cat with a feline herpes virus after its owners noticed it was poorly. However, the sample was then tested for SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, as part of a research program. Follow-up samples confirmed the cat was also co-infected with SARS-CoV-2. Downing Street said the cat had nasal discharge and some shortness of breath that prompted its owners to go to the vet. The cat was in England, but no more details have been revealed. Well, I think, personally, that it's quite crucial to get this sort of information out on the location of where these outbreaks are. The government is a joke. NHS staff carry out coronavirus tests at a facility in Bracebridge Heath, Lincoln, with contaminated testing. Number 10 said the case followed animal infections in nations including France, Netherlands, Spain, Italy, Germany, Denmark, the US, China and Hong Kong. The Prime Minister's official spokesman said there is no evidence that pets or other domestic animals directly transmit the virus to people. All of the available evidence in this case suggests the cat contracted this from its owners, who had themselves previously tested positive for COVID-19. He added, if your pet is unwell, you should keep it indoors until such time as it's recovered. If you're sufficiently concerned, you can, of course, take your pet to the vet. Chief Veterinary Officer Christine Middlemiss said, this is a very rare event with infected animals detected today, only showing mild clinical signs and recovering within a few days. There is no evidence to suggest that pets directly transmit the virus to humans. We will continue to monitor this situation closely and will we'll update our guidance to pet owners should the situation change. Yvonne Doyle, Medical Director at Public Health England said, this is the first case of a domestic cat testing positive for COVID-19 in the UK, but should not be cause for alarm. The investigation into this case suggests that the infection was spread from humans to animal and not the other way around. At this time, there is no evidence that pets can transmit the disease to humans. In line with the general advice on fighting coronavirus, you should wash your hands regularly, including before and after contact with animals. Okay, let's take a look at the Metro. A report from 31st of March 2020. Testing kits heading to the UK contaminated with coronavirus. Yippee! Components for a coronavirus testing kits have been contaminated with COVID-19. Reuters. Testing kits that are due to arrive in the UK were found to have been contaminated with coronavirus, according to reports. The government claims there is currently a capacity to carry out 11,000 tests a day, while the aim is to carry out 25,000 tests per day by mid-April. Last week, Health Secretary Matt Hancock said 3.5 million antibody tests have been ordered while Britain has been sourcing kits from private companies to help meet demand. But according to the Daily Telegraph, it was discovered that key components ordered from Eurofins, a company based in Luxembourg, had been contaminated with COVID-19. The report claims that Eurofins has warned laboratories in the UK that a delivery of parts referred to as probes and primers had been contaminated. Eurofins said that the issue can be resolved by proper cleaning, but admitted the discovery would result in a delay. A drive through coronavirus testing station has been set up at Chessington World of Adventures. <laughs> God, oh Lord, please, please wake everybody up. Health Secretary Matt Hancock has revealed the government has ordered 3.5 million test kits. A spokesperson for Eurofins told the Telegraph, in rare occasions, delays in some orders may occur if based on Eurofins genomics, stringent quality and environmental control procedures. Manufacturing of a product may not meet the quality or purity criteria set by Eurofins geno genomics. Genomics. 
omicking your genes. We are aware that contaminations of the nature you mentioned have been observed by several primers and probe probes manufacturers around the world after they produce SARS-CoV-2 positive controls. These initial problems can easily be resolved by proper cleaning and production segregation procedures. The UK is under increased pressure to test more people to get ahead of the coronavirus planned pandemic. It doesn't really exist. Oh. But Tony Blair, the warmongering, lying, murdering, treasonous ex-Prime Minister, has warned that virtually everybody in the UK would need to be tested multiple times. Your risk, obviously, is as you start to ease the lockdown, how do you then deal with any resurgence of the disease? This, of course, is what they're now dealing with in China and South Korea and elsewhere, he told Sky News on Sunday. This is Tony Blair, war criminal, guilty of crimes against humanity, lying, colluding with Bush over the Iraq war. He needs to be in prison, this man. Tony Blair claims virtually everybody in the UK will need to be tested for coronavirus. Well, that ain't me, sunshine. I don't trust you. I don't trust your judgment. I don't trust anything about you, Tony Blair. Unless you have that testing capability that you can apply at scale. And by the way, when I say mass testing, I mean, I actually think you will need to get to the point where you've got the capability. And I assume we're preparing for this now of testing literally a very large proportion of the entire population. And I assume, nunquam ad sumer, and never assume, because you will make an ass of you and me. No, never assume. I don't trust him at all. I don't trust anybody in government at all. You may have to do those tests two or three different times because you need all the time to be able to track what's happening with the disease. To learn where, for example, there may be a surge or a hotspot of it and take immediate action. OK, so back on Reuters, a report from July 14, 2020. Fact check. Contaminated CDC COVID-19 test kits recalled and did not spread the virus. So that's two headlines in one. Images on social media make the claim that COVID-19 test kits contain the virus, implying that getting tested is a means of becoming infected. This claim contains a mixture of accurate and inaccurate information. The quote included in the posts is misleading. The images, which show a swabbing procedure used for COVID-19 testing, are accompanied by a quote alleging that the US Center for Disease Control and Prevention the CDC sent states tainted lab test kits in early February that were themselves seeded with the virus, federal officials have confirmed. Examples of the claim are visible here and here. I'll at least take you to Facebook. So I'll leave links to all these pages. I'm not going to Facebook. The quote included on the post on social media stems from an article by Ars Technica from April 20th, 2020. The article reported on a federal investigation which found, which found that during initial production of COVID-19 tests, the CDC failed to show protocol and contaminated a batch of tests, making them virtually ineffective. In the second paragraph of the same article, Ars Technica reports that the contamination did not spread the virus to people, but it made test results uninterpretable. So, if there was a contaminated batch of tests what were they contaminated with and if it did not spread the virus to people then why are we all locked down and distancing and having to wear masks if it doesn't spread even when you get it shoved up your nose with a testing swab I don't understand it it's full of bullshit a lot of it 
Back in April, the New York Times and Washington Post also reported that lab practices have made the first coronavirus tests in the country ineffective. The incident resulted in delays for the rollout of more testing as cases began to surge in the US. The Post reported in June that according to a federal review, the contamination of the tests most likely occurred in the CDC's respiratory virus diagnostic lab. The tests began showing issues before they were shipped out to the state health labs. So far, COVID-19 tests have been administered effectively across the country, although below the nationwide target of 1.6 million tests. According to data from the COVID tracking project, last week, on average, 634,000 people were tested daily for COVID-19. It is therefore false to say COVID-19 test kits contain the virus. The social media posts misleadingly point to an incident earlier in the year in which tests were rendered ineffective after being contaminated during pre-testing phases. These tests did not spread the virus to the people. Verdict. False. COVID-19 tests do not contain the virus. So this is false, which means COVID-19 tests do contain the virus. Okay, and here's the New York Times. This was a, one of the links on the last article. CDC labs were c contaminated, delaying coronavirus testing, officials say. Fallout from the agency's failed rollout of national coronavirus kits two months ago continues to haunt U.S. efforts to combat the spread of the highly infectious virus. Well, that's doubtful now. Uh, especially after the cat article and multiple people in a house, some of who didn't get the virus. Now this is the Center for Disease Control and Prevention Headquarters in Atlanta, CDC. Now why isn't it CDCP? Hmm? Let's take a quick look at Gematronator. Just to see why it's not CDCP. So CDC, I've got all ciphers here. It's just curious. CDC, 88 stands out. And 115 is a bit of an alert number. But the 88, all the 8s, is synonymous with ill doing. Let's take a look at CDCP. The only one that really stands out there is that one as being standout-ish. So I guess they've dropped the P because of the 88. Two fat ladies, all the 115, which is much like 911 and 711. Or reverse those, 117, 119. So what's the 88 then? We've just gone off a bit off topic here. But this is tra tra Travel China Guide. Lucky numbers in China. Numbers have always played a significant role in Chinese culture. People in China traditionally associate fortune with lucky numbers. Thus, there came a system of lucky numbers on their own way. So what's the eight? Okay, what are the lucky numbers in China? Number eight. In China, it is customary to regard even numbers as being more auspicious than odd ones. So, gifts are given in even numbers for the celebration of all occasions. Number 8 has long been regarded as, as the luckiest number in Chinese culture. With pronunci pronunciation of ba, ba, in Chinese. No, number 8 sounds similar to the word fa, which means to make a fortune. Say enough there, it's all about money. So anyway, CDC. Why the CDC? And now, why not the CDCP? This is a report by Sheila Kaplan, April the 18th, 2020. Updated May 7th, 2020. Sloppy laboratory practices at the Centre for Disease Control and Prevention caused contamination that rendered the nation's first coronavirus test ineffective, federal officers confirmed on Saturday. 
two of the three CDC laboratories in Atlanta that created the coronavirus test kits violated their own manufacturing standards, resulting in the agency sending tests that did not work to nearly all of the 100 state and local public health labs, according to the Food and Drug Administration. Okay, a report from rstechnica.com, I think. And this report from the 20th of April, 2020. Tragic. Tragic, indeed. So why has the human race become so gullible? CDC's failed coronavirus tests were tainted with coronavirus. Feds confirm. They confirm. A federal investigation found CDC researchers not following protocol. Again, CDC, P, CDC, ATA, all about the money, big pharma, connections. It's a wicked web, the robbing, robbing the taxpayer, forcing a vac some vaccination program. Not for me, thank you. Save your money on me. As the new coronavirus took root across America, the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention was not, is it? It's just a U.S. It's a Center for Disease Control, CDC. It's not CDCP. It's about the controlling the disease, not about preventing it. Sent states tainted lab kit test kits in early February that were themselves seeded with the virus. Federal officials have confirmed. The contamination did not spread the virus to people, but it made test results uninterpretable. And because testing is crucial for containment efforts, it lost the country val invaluable time to get ahead of the advancing planned pandemic. The CDC has been vague about what went wrong with the tests, initially only saying that a problem in the manufacturing of one of the reagents had led to the failure. Subsequent reporting suggested that the problem was with a negative control. That is, a part of the test meant to be free of any trace of coronavirus as a critical reference for confirming that the test was working properly overall. Now, according to investigation, results reported by the New York Times, federal officials confirmed that sloppy laboratory practices at two of three CDC labs involved in the test creation led to contamination of the tests and their uninterpretable results why it's just tragic shortly after the problems became apparent in early february the food and drug administration sent timothy stenzel chief of in vitro diagnostics a radiological help to the center for disease control to investigate what was going wrong. According to the Times, he found a lack of coordination and inexperience in commercial manufacturing. I won't read any more of this because it basically, this video boils down to why I'm not taking any tests. Firstly, I don't believe the government, I don't believe any governments, I don't believe any political figure um, it just, to me, I'm not, you, you know, they're rolling out this, that some vaccine, they're putting orders in for something that isn't, doesn't actually exist. So, this is, um, this is what the main reason why, well, it's the two main reasons why I'm not out being tested. I don't want to be tracked, I don't want to get contaminated, I don't want anything shoved up my nose. If I feel ill, I will lock myself away. If I need hospital treatment, I, I won't bother, I'll just die in my home. That's what I'm going to do. I've been practicing. So, we've got shonky pharmaceuticals. Uh, a planned demic, something that isn't real. I don't watch television at all. I don't read newspapers at all. This is very rarely if I'm just chasing some information up that I read online newspapers. I go out in my community and I get all the news about my community and what's going on in my community. And there have been 
a few deaths that have been attributed to coronavirus of old people that were going to die anyway of something alzheimer's cancers you know just all sorts of things old age natural old age that they're going to die anyway if they hadn't died of this coronavirus they'd have died of something else they'd have died of the common flu and the common flu doesn't shut the world down hasn't shut the world down so this is why i'm not taking any vaccine this is why i'm not taking any test i don't trust anybody that works for government i don't trust anybody that works in in prescribing drugs i don't work believe in big, big pharma all this money they're throwing around where does it all come from Billions here, billions there, billions there, trillions. Where's all the money coming from? Okay?